The Keychron Q2. Am I gonna waste your time? No, it's pretty good. If you're an average gamer, just want a keyboard and don't want to do anything to it, then this is probably it. I mean, listen to this. But what if I told you that we can make it a lot better with only a couple easy steps? In this video, I'm gonna take the Keychron Q2, give it a quick review, and then make it a lot better. Now, you don't need to mod this keyboard, but howdy hey, I'm Hippiotech, and I'm gonna do it. Speaking of howdy hey, howdy hey to everyone that hit the subscribe and like button. Nice. No, like you can still hit it here. Oh, nice. Howdy hey. Anyways, let me start with the disclosures. This keyboard was sent to me by Keychron. I am an affiliate with them, meaning that if you purchase it, I will make money. After what I said about the Q1, I was a little bit confused that they still wanted to send this to me. But you know what? <laughs> Q2. This board is available for purchase right now via the link down in the description. And wait, don't buy it yet. Just listen to my review and decide if you want it. It starts at $149 for the bare bones version. And guess what? There's $30 shipping guaranteed. So any price you see on their website, add 30 bucks to it. They're a little bit shady with that. I have the fully assembled with knob, so it would be $210 after shipping. But it also comes in an ISO version, a normal version without the knob, and there's a bunch of different weird variations. But we don't really care about that. You can read a product page. Now, Keychron debuted their enthusiast mechanical keyboards with the Q1, which is a 75% keyboard that kept the F row. However, in my previous video, in the top right, we can clearly hear it has some ping issues. That's me every time I play Valorant. Hm. Now, theoretically, they fixed some of this, and that this board should not sound as pingy. But we're gonna put that to the test and see whether or not this keyboard is a blacksmith's anvil or a good keyboard. Now, something that's still for some reason missing on the Q1 is the knob that you see in the top right. Uh, it controls volume, can play and pause. It's neat. I like knobs. Knobs are good. Stop, British viewers. Stop. I know what you're doing. Anyways, this board is a double gasket mount, and we'll be taking a look at that soon. But as you can see, there's no F row and there are some chunky bezels. The design of this keyboard is interesting and I can't quite decide if I like it. It does, however, have a Windows and a Mac slider. So if you're somebody that goes between two different work computers, that's pretty helpful. However, it's not wireless. Oh, and uh, yeah, you can swap the keys out as well if you're Windows or Mac. And RGB, epic RGB gamer time, let's go. This board doesn't come with shine through keycaps. So if that's your type of thing, you're gonna have to buy those separately but it does come with keycaps that aren't too bad. And some epic RGB mode that is programmable via QMK and VIA. VIA is a brilliant software that lets you customize your keyboard's layout and lighting and such. So 100% good thing, good software. You just set up macros, change keys, adjust lighting, and whoa, look at this flex, oh my gosh. That's the gasket mount, keep that in mind. Now let's get to this keyboard's dirty little secret. Oh, wait, don't take off a spacebar like that. Browns. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. They're Gateron Browns. They're okay. They're not they're not the worst. I actually kind of like Browns. And screw and stabilizers. Oh my gosh. So this keyboard comes with three different switch options: reds, which are linears and relatively light; browns, which are kind of tactile; and blues, which are tactile and clicky. As of recording, blues have already sold out, and I've lost faith in humanity. Although, if you're an enthusiast, you're probably more interested in this, which are hot swap sockets. No matter what version of this board you buy, you'll be able to replace the switches very easily by just using a switch puller. If only you could replace teeth that easily. Dentists are expensive. Um, anyways, uh, this keyboard uses double shot ABS keycaps. These have a relatively sharp sound profile, and I'm not that keen on them, but we'll talk about that more later. The back of this board is incredibly plain and collects fingerprints like mad. Speaking of mad, I have some of the products listed down in the bottom left with YouTube's new product feature. Let me know if that works for you guys. It, it, just click on them if you want, I guess. It seems really janky, but it's a thing now. Speaking of janky, I janked the heck out of those screws and got them all out. Now, if you're following along at home to make your board better, uh, this part is important. If you're doing a bare bones build, I'm not sure if these gaskets will be pre-installed. And if they're not, make sure you install them very carefully, as these gaskets are really easy to rip. But if your board is pre-built, it's kind of whatever. But these gaskets are poron, they're incredibly squishy, and there's one on the bottom side and top side of the PCB. It kind of makes it so it sits into the plate really nicely. There's also a layer of foam in between the plate and PCB. This kind of reduces vibrations and makes it less pingy. And also this layer of foam at the bottom with this interesting film. 
Now this board is still a little bit pingy, but nowhere near as pingy, and maybe this film has to do with it? I can't remember if this was on the Q1 or not. Like, it just kind of sounds like metal now. But what's most impressive about this board is the incredibly pillowy gasket performance. Like, I'm not pressing hard here. This is kind of the normal typing pressure that you'd be applying. And this board definitely absorbs a lot of those vibrations. So, okay, that spacebar is incredibly loud, and that's been pointed out by a lot of different people. And there is fixes for that that you can look up. Personally, I kind of like it, though. But what about the stabilizers? So the stock stabilizers are a little bit rattly, but I'd call that like not awful. I think if you were to not mod this keyboard, you would probably be happy if you were most people. But I'm Hippiotech and I'm gonna mod it. First, I started off by putting three layers of tape on the PCB. This is the Tempest Tape Mod, and I've done a video on it that you can check out in the top right if you want the full details. I wanted to make the board more poppy and less sharp. Here's a before and after. The space bar be thonking though. But yeah, you hear out in the after, it's a little bit poppier. It goes pop, 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 or whatever. Now, if you're really lazy, you could stop there. Done, done deal, board sounds better. But uh, I've got more to show, okay? All right, so here's a bonus meme, bonus meme time. For some reason, Keychron sent a bunch of Christmassy keycaps, which you know what? I am not mad about. I actually really, I, these are pretty interesting. Look at this guy, he's a little candy cane, oh my gosh, look at him. Now, I think this was to show off Keychron's keycap offering, because they sell a bunch of die sub PBT keycaps, and I'll put those in the description. And for $40, you know what? They're pretty good, Keychron, I'll give you that. They are thick PBT, they have a deeper sound profile, and honestly, the printing on these was really decent. I'm not mad about this whatsoever. But uh, we're not gonna use those Christmassy keycaps, right? No way. Anyways, let's get back to the build. Um, I took off all of those keycaps, and now I'm gonna be... Oh, there's the switches. There they go. Bye. Bye, Browns. See you later. And now I've got some switches up my sleeve. Hee <laughs> hee. If you're following along at home with a bare bones board, this is where you can start. Oh yeah, by the way, screw in stabilizers. They aren't too bad, but I won't really talk about them much. Now, my goal here is gonna be get this board sounding a lot deeper. So I had something just perfect for the task. I've been asked to try these switches literally more times than I can count, and these are the Gateron Box Inc. V2s. For those of you that don't know much about switches, I'll get into it a little bit, but not too much. To improve the sound, these have been lubed and filmed. And if you want to hear more about the lubing process, I'll maybe do a video about it soon. It might be, might be due for a refresher. But essentially, each one of these switches has been modded with lube and a film. Now, Keeps for All is an affiliate, and they sent these out. If you want to get them, you can use code HIPPIO to save 5%. But, like, I, I would have bought them anyways. Now, with these switches lubed and filmed, this is gonna sound so good. Like, I was testing this out before I even put these keycaps on, and I went, ooh. Now, these switches are relatively light with only a 60 gram spring, and they're linear, which means they go all the way down, smooth. This means we'll be getting a lot of bottom out sound because I'm gonna bottom out a lot easier on these than I would on like a 70 gram linear. But what keycaps is Hippio gonna use, huh? My God, he actually used the Christmas keycaps. What is he doing? It's it's January. No. Well, y'all, I can't be stopped. Uh, this actually looks so cool. Like what? Okay, so I mentioned I wanted to go for a deeper sound profile, and the stock keycaps that came with this board just aren't fit for it. ABS sounds a lot sharper, I guess, clackier. I don't quite know how to describe it. And these thicker PVT keycaps sounded a lot deeper. So it was what I was going for, you know? Now, if you do choose to get this board, there's more mods you can do to it that will make it sound even better. It's just, this is the bare bones that I wanted to do for this video. But as I said before, you really kind of don't need to mod this keyboard if you're super lazy. Like if you have a friend that wants to get into keyboards, send them this keyboard as a gateway drug because it'll be good, but not good, not, not as good as it could be. And then they're gonna get into modding it. And the next thing you know, they're addicted to keyboards and they're watching the Hippiotech YouTube channel and my master plan has been complete. Have them subscribe too. Now I'll show you a sound test right after I make this board a little bit cooler with the sponsor of today's video. Cable Mod is the one-stop shop for any custom cable that you might dream of. Okay, ignore this packaging. I've opened this before, I was too excited. It normally looks really nice. With Cable Mod's customizer tool, I made a very, very sleek custom cable and it's a straight cable. However, if you're into coiled cables, they have coiled cables pre-configured starting at $39. If you wanna make the perfect cable for your build or just have a little bit of fun, then click that link down in the description to visit CableMod. 
For the prices, these cables are very, very good and very competitive. You should check them out. If you watch the whole sponsor spot, then howdy hey. Anyways, I'll be leaving you with the sound test. Please watch the whole thing. I've got a before, middle, and after for you to compare. And then do a sound test of your own in the comments. Anyways.